Amen. And let me go here real, real fast. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my. And there was just so much stuff with this. So um, obviously, I, I can't, I'm not going to do it all in one, one, one session. Um, well, let me just stop this real quick. Uh, okay. Cool. Well, let me, let me, here. it's on the second slide, so I'm going to go ahead and say the, show the first slide, and then I'm going to start the show. The PowerPoint, rather. Okay, cool. Cool. The protector being protected. Male lions are called the king of the jungle because of their their fierce strength and their their absolute power 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 um, disposition as being the most powerful creature on earth or in the jungle. But why are the female lions the hunters? Do you think about that? Why is the most fearsome, most awesome, powerful creature not the hunters? We're starting Genesis really quick. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over all the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the face of the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth, of all the earth, and every tree which is in the tree, I'm sorry, in every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. When a couple comes together, they look like God. I was going to stop it really quick. Now, there's a couple of things I'm going to get a little bit crazy on you guys. You know, like, you know, I'm going to. There are some rabbis, some sages who believe that when God said, let us make man in our image, when he created this being, it was actually a man and a woman together as one being. Because there's one God, even though there's three separate Father, Son, and Spirit, that's still one God. So to create the feminine parts of God and the fem and the feminine parts of God and the men uh, masculine parts of, parts of God created this one being that was like you might you know I might say one side was was male, the other side was female, and that's one reason why he had to split them apart. That's one aspect of it. But the point of it is this: when he created them, he said male and female. That's the first time. We hear those words mentioned, male and female. But in the Hebrew, the word male is the word that's called um, zakar, and it means to remember. That's interesting. And the female word, the word for female in Hebrew, it means puncture. So why in the world, when the Bible says, let's create man in our image, male and female created he him, it basically is basically saying, and in, in, uh, in the image of God, male, uh, remember, Punctures. Why would you say that? Why would that be the, the number one word for husband and wife, man and wife? Remember and puncture. Now, I we talked about that before where I said, this when it was talks about Jesus because um, remember my punctures, remember my wounds, do this, do this, remember, do this in remembrance of me. Uh, that, that, that There's that connotation with it, but also to, 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 to qualify the statement of basically stating that those two words, male and female, aren't exactly man and wife or man and woman. Are you with me? Just, just to kind of shake the rattle the cage up there real quick. So basically, when these two come together, you're supposed to look like God. Now, the mandate for the male and female uh, in Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 28, it says, and God blessed them, and God said to them, them, right? 
I put the them in red. He first tells them together, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over all the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon, upon the face of the earth. Basically saying, I'm putting you in charge. You are king of the earth. Together, both of them, together. Now, when we skip over to the second chapter, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, the Bible says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust. Now the word is not male, it's man, Adam. That's what that word man is in, in Hebrew. It's Adam. Formed Adam of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and Adam became a living soul. Verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the Adam whom he had, whom he had formed. Now, a few quick questions. In Genesis chapter 1, God created male and female and gave them both authority. I'm going to say that part again. He gave them both equal authority. He didn't give specific instructions to one and then semi-sub-instructions semi to the other. He gave them both authority as king and queen of planet earth in genesis 2 god formed a human adam and then breathed life into his in, uh, into his nostrils into his nose right we read that and the human became a living soul so quick question we know that adam was a living soul so were the first male and female living souls It doesn't say, does it? Second question. And we know that the male and female were created in the image of God. So then was Adam formed in the image of God? I mean, we could stop right there. But think about that for a second. When God said, let us create man in our image. And the word is selem in the Hebrew. And that means a shadow reflection of ourselves. Basically, I want a mirror reflection on earth that looks like us. That's what God said. But in the second chapter of Genesis, we see that God then now takes and forms mankind, Adam, out of the dirt or the soil of earth. So, question, does that figure that he makes in the dust, is that supposed to be a representation of what God looks like in sand form? Get in here, buddy. We're talking about two separate entities. Two separate creations. Two separate sets of human creations. Now I'm not gonna. We're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on the 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 exegesis of it all. But literally, we're talking about one. The first one were created. The second one were formed. Okay, but we're gonna talk about the second one because that's where mankind was stemming from. The first ones weren't considered mankind. The second ones are considered mankind. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 says, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs. Now, uh, now, in the King James, it says one of his ribs. But in the Hebrew, it's actually half of his side, his side. And closed up the flesh thereof. And the side, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now. Did you see that? Now. Bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Now, the word man is ish in the Hebrew. The word woman there is isha. So he's saying basically, um, she shall be called isha because she was taken out of ish. So the ish and the isha are there's a combination, there's a, there's a, a oneness. Therefore, shall a man. Leave his 
father and his mother and shall cleave unto his, his wife and they shall be one flesh. So I'm going to pause it here for a second. Back to my lions. I didn't put this in the notes because I felt it was just very long and, and just plain out. I was just going to state it. When a, 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 a male lion, when he's establishing his pride, the, the female lions stay with the pride. They do. They stay with the pride forever. Did you hear me? Forever. But if a male lion decides to start his own pride, he leaves his mother and father and goes and starts another pride somewhere. Isn't it interesting that the animal kingdom follows biblical principles? Come on, somebody. The animal kingdom follows biblical principles. So we see that Adam is made on earth out of earth soil. God breathes into his nostrils and he becomes a living soul, right? He then takes that living soul, Adam, human being, and places him in a place of God's paradise, a spiritual place, a place not on earth. It is not on earth. It is a spiritual dimension. It is there that God puts him to sleep and then takes half of his body and then creates Eve, right? Now, the really cool thing is this. Adam was made from earth soil. Eve was made from uh, uh, Eden soil, which is a whole completely different terrain. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best not to get, get weird on you, but suffice it to say, there is a difference between a male and female because of our, our, our genomes. And both male and female, we both have, in fact, even, oh, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me, let, me, let me slow down a little bit. I'm excited. Can you tell? Here's what we know. <laughs> Here's what we know. Adam is now a living soul. And Eve is a spiritual being formed from Eden soil. Isn't it interesting that Eve is never called a living soul? I mean, granted, it's not mentioned. It's not mentioned. But all, we, all we're told is that God opened up Adam, took half of his body, made Eve, and then brought her, her to him. Maybe because there's nothing dead on Eden. Everything is already alive in Eden. Come on, somebody. Already alive. There's nothing that you got to breathe into because it's already alive. And it is then brought to her. her, her, her she's then brought to him. So Adam is a living soul. Made from earth dust. Eve is a being made from Eden soil. One thing is for certain. Eve was Adam's bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. So all the authority that King Adam has, Eve has it too. I'm going to say that part again. Since Eve came out of Adam, and was bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh, all the authority that Adam has, Eve has it too, because they are literally one and the same. In other words, God does not create a substandard human being. God does not create somebody who's a less than, a, a varsity team, and then a JV squad, no. He literally takes Adam, takes out half of his body, and then makes another being. It doesn't mean that she's inferior. She's weaker. In fact, she's absolutely identical. You know why? They share the same DNA. So because of the fact they share the same DNA, all the things that made up Adam also make up Eve. So never get in that place where you feel that women are substandard, below, weaker vessels. Not on, on the contrary. They're not the weaker the, the weaker vessels. They literally came out of man, the east to the isha. Now, I'm, I'm going to just freak you out a little bit. So hang on, guys. It's going to get crazy. Just so we're clear. <laughs> When God says, you know, because, you know, because of the sin and they partook of the, of the, of the fruit they weren't supposed to, and God's handing down judgments, God tells Eve, uh, he says, uh, your urge shall be for your husband, but he will have rule over you. And it's because of that, we've heard ministers over the years state, 
okay, so men are superior, women are sub are sub sub superior, of a lesser quality. It doesn't mean the man is better than a woman. Ready for this? This is what it means in the Hebrew. For matters of sexual relations, he will have the last word. Good evening, everybody. For matters of sexual relations, he will have the last word. That's what the phrase means. It has nothing to do with authority or power, but everything to do with the because of the fact that she fell. Now, this is interesting. And I'm going to just, I'm going to kind of give you a preview of what we're going to talk about Saturday as we continue this. I thought it was very powerful that one man that said, if you can have a man of God who loves God, who desires to do nothing more but to please God, who has faith and power to move mountains, who all every desire is to, to worship, praise, and give all the glory to God. But if a girl is handing him a cookie and she's butt naked and the guy said, don't take it, that man won't take it. You know why? Because of a naked girl gave it to him. And you would think when all the power and all the majesty and glory that a man can literally have to, to move mountains, to, to shake the kingdoms and to, to travel the world, one naked woman can have authority than the kingdom of heaven. Isn't that interesting? One naked chick. But women don't have that problem. If God had said something to the effect of, I need you to go to Africa, I need you to go preach. But a woman butt naked goes, come on, spend that with me. What is that man going to do? That is power. You can't put a price tag on. And I'm, I'm, I'm well, let me just, I'm not saying every man, I'm not, just saying that is the weakness of, of the human male frailty of the male ego and the male desires. He will leave the kingdom for the sake of tasting one piece of forbidden fruit. And that's that's our problem. But not a woman. Why is that? We're going to get to that in a second. Thank, thank you for asking. Now, we've had Adam's circle as king of the earth, the soul realm. That is his domain. He is king of the earth, the soul realm. And we have Eve's circle as the mother of all living, the spirit realm. The intersection of both circles is where the fullness of God's power is. As you can see here, where both these two circles interact, it is in the middle, right there, is where the image of God is realized. When the combination of the man's circle and all this, uh, his domain of, on, on the earth realm, protecting the soul, and then you have the woman, of the, the spirit realm, when they come together, you've got the perfect fullness of power of heaven and earth. It is in that place where you stand and resemble the image of God. The circles of responsibility. The husband protects the soul of his wife. And the wife protects the spirit of her husband. I'm going to say it again, just in case you didn't catch that. The husband protects the soul of his wife. And the wife protects the spirit of, of her husband. And why, you ask? Because Adam's domain was the earth realm. Eve's domain was the spirit realm. Yes, they both got kicked out. But together, heaven and earth com come together, resemble the very nature, the very power, power or resemblance of the glory of God. So in other words, when you see a married couple living for God, that is the, ima God, that is the image of heaven and earth together in one place. Because man has authority over all dominion, over every beast of the field, over every bird in the air and every fish in the sea. And then you have the woman who has that authority where, God, where uh, Adam says, 
you are the mother of everything living. So this is how powerful it is. It is so powerful that when punishment is being handed down and things are being said and judgments and consequences, God says, I'm going to put into enmity, uh, uh, aggression and conflict between your seed and her seed, not his seed, her seed, because the female contains, because again, we're not talking about Eden soil, um, earth soil, we're talking about Eden soil. And so Eden soil is so potent, so powerful that a woman, she can make her breaks make or break her house, household by the words she speaks. That is power from the spirit realm. That is, you can't put a price tag on that. Adam, the Bible says, God says, yeah, you're going to sweat from your brow, uh, but you're going to, it's going to, the earth is going to produce thorns and thistles and you're going to have to sweat, but you will be able to produce a living. But the woman, he says, you can make or break your household by the words you speak. Come on, somebody. That is power. So if you get the power of having dominion over the birds and air and fish of the sea, and then you've got the voice of a woman able to make or break her house, so coming together as one, you've got one dynamical, par dynamical, dynamic, powerful voice, strength that can shake heaven and earth together, together. The coming together of both heaven and earth, same place, same time. So you know, you're probably asking, so now how does your circle find and interact with somebody else's circle? How can I be in that place to find my circle? I want to find my protector, right? I want to find that that woman, that woman of God who's gonna protect my spirit and watch over me. Or if you're a female, I wanna I wanna find that man who's gonna be my protector and the voice around me and my male line. Where's he at? How do I find these at? How do you find that perfect lion? How do you find them? You must first realize your role. As a man, you must be able to protect your woman in areas of safety and provision. So basically, get a job, work, have a home, provide a home, make your wife feel comfortable in your home. That is your responsibility. As a woman, you must be able to protect the spiritual realm of your man. He's already taken, taken care of the part of making sure there's food on the table and there's electricity and, and gas in the car. So then therefore, you and your role must be able to protect the spirit realm. And now, now and I'm, I'm just gonna tell you, just, just because of the, just because, just to be clear, um, guys, Sometimes we're stupid. I'm going to be out there. I'm going to say it. Sometimes we're stupid. So we can't see when an old, old Jesse Bell wants to come in there and try to manipulate us and control us. We can't tell that. We take their compliments as our ego busters. They'll go, oh, thank you. And he goes, oh, Dre, look, oh, look at those muscles. You look like Denzel. Oh, <laughs> do I? Uh, and so, you know, our ego is loving it. We don't understand the inner workings of what's happening behind the scenes. Oh, but a woman does. A woman of God does. Come on, somebody. A woman of God can go, uh-huh. I see you, Jezebel. Oh, uh -huh. no, no, keep your hand. And they have this uncanny ability to see when somebody is not living right. They have an innate nature about them to point out with discernment. No, stay away from that woman. She's out with another purpose to take you down. That is a spiritual gift that is inherent to the DNA of a woman. A male thinks, oh, she was just complimenting me. Oh, she was just being nice. No, my brother, she was not being nice to you. No, I'm sorry, she wasn't. And the reason that is is because of the fact you contain something that she wants to pull. Call it Delilah if you want. But there's a reason why there was a woman used to pull the strength from that man. He couldn't recognize it. He couldn't see it. He saw somebody cute. Did I go on? He saw the hottie down the street. Everybody else saw the plan and knew the plan, except for old Sansom, strength, powerful man of God. How quickly we fall. So yes, men, you need that spiritual gift of the protector of the spirit realm watching over you.
Now, what does that look like? I'm not saying that she needs to be like, um, you know, the spiritual police. She's a Jezebel. <laughs> She's a thief. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not saying there's there's some 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 the fringe element out there is out there. I I know, but I'm talking about in the realm where you are trying to do the best you can, but yet there's always that force. There's always that pull to where something's not right. You probably can't tell it, but your woman can. Oh yeah, she can see right through it. And this is an innate ability that God has given them because they are the protectors of your spirit. There's one reason why in a marriage, <clears throat> we've got the notion from our Greek mentality, the groom is there waiting up in front and then the bride walks to him. That's Greek, that's not Hebrew. And Hebrew, it is actually the bride who's there and then the bridegroom walks towards her. Remember, I, we just read it in Genesis. When a, man, uh, when a man leaves his mother and father and then is then joined to his wife, not the wife leave her mother and father and is joined to the husband, we've got it backwards. So we are already got a negative strike against us. So when the bridegroom is then walking up to his bride, his new wife or bride-to-be, uh, wife-to-be, she then walks around him seven times. You know why? To protect him from the get-go, from the point she says, I do, will you marry me? He walks to her. He, She then walks seven times around her man as an area of protection, a spiritual area of protection. He then gives her a ring to symbolize, thank you for walking around me seven times, protecting me. Did you know that? That circle of what she does spiritually is what the man does and gives the ring to her naturally. So what she does in the spirit is then reflected in the natural by providing a ring that goes in her finger, symbolizing what has just taken place in the spirit realm of her watching and protecting the spiritual environment of the household. As a woman, you must be able to protect the spiritual realm of the man. Men, if you're only looking at a woman's physical traits, you're not going to find a spiritual protector. So everything you desire to do for God will always come under spiritual, uh, yeah, spiritual resistance. I'm going to say it again. If you're only looking at a woman's physical traits, you're not going to find a spiritual protector. You're going to you, so everything you desire to do for God will always come or come under spiritual resistance. Because she's not going to be able to discern because you looked at her boobs. Good evening, everybody. Women, if you're only looking at a man's physique, you're not going to find a man who will protect and provide for your soul. He's too busy focusing on how well he looks. He's too busy going to the gym to spend time with the family. Come on, somebody. He's too busy making sure that he's got his, his uh, hair grooming gear uh, 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 down packed. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying there, there obviously there needs to be attraction, but more importantly, it needs to be that spiritual connection first. And I'm not, uh, and, and okay, by saying this, I'm not saying that, well, I am saying this. When you come to, you know, looking for somebody to who's going to be that circle, who's going to complete your circle, <laughs> it always, it's always good to say, what are your, you know, like, what's your plan? What, what is God telling you to do? What is your, your mission, your mandate? What do you feel that the authority God has put in your life? And they go, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> girl, I'm just trying to stay safe, girl. <laughs> no, that's not the one. Well, not the one right now. Same thing with the woman. If all she cares about is like, well, how much money do you make? What kind of car do you drive? Yeah, she's not going to protect you spiritually because she's looking into the materialistic of things. It needs to be that balance where she's at that place and that, at that where she's at spiritually to sit there and go, brother, I don't know what God has called you to do, but I will I will be praying for you. I will be in receipt. God, you feel God in this? God's presence. Wow. Uh, I will be praying for you. I will be interceding for you. If you are sick, baby, I got you. I will be Covering you with prayers. Same thing with the woman. Same thing with the man. Um, how was work? Let me. Just, you got a coworker? Let me just pray about that with you. There's a covering where the protector protects the protected, and the protected protects the protector. They work in conjunction. They work in harmony together. Thank you, Lord. 
So about good Lord, 25, no, I'm sorry, 29, almost 30 years ago, my son was just born and we just married him a few months ago. He was just born. And Pamela and I, we got into this little nasty argument and fight. And I, to this day, I can't even begin to tell you what we were fighting about. All I know is I did my little immature, I'm out of here. Dun, 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 dun. I'm leaving in the huff. I grabbed me a box. I put all my stuff in the box. It goes, I'm out of here. Hasta la vista, baby. I'm gone. And I just walked out there. Dun, 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 dun. That guy was about to get in my car. Pamela comes outside, and I was already in my car. So she is, I'm I'm in the driveway. She's in by the door, uh, the house, and she, she opens the door, and she goes, ha, ha, you ain't going nowhere, mister. One day, you're going to make a lot of money. Ha, and as your wife, I get half. You are not taking that away from me, baby. You ain't doing that for me. I get half of what you got. You can go wherever you want to, but I still get half. Oh, one day, you're going to be rich, and half of that is mine. So take that. Go. Bye. And so I was like, I had no defense. And I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there going like, I was literally about to walk away from this marriage and just walk away. But she said, you know, one day you're going to be rich and <laughs> baby, half that money is mine. Uh, you ain't going nowhere. And I'm just like, okay. So I took my butt, my box, my stuff back into the house. And to this day, I, 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 I can't even tell what we were arguing about. I was just so blessed said that I was just so like wow even while we're fighting you still see that she still saw something in me when I didn't see it for myself that is a protector that is a protector we all have a realm alliance of a pride that's the realm in fact what a lion does when he gets his pride together He's got these powerful claws. And what he does is he sticks his, he literally takes his, his claws and he, I pause rather, puts them in the dirt and he, he's securing them down with his claws. So he's clamped down. He arches his back and he takes the most deepest breath and he goes, and he begins to roar at the ground. And that roar is so powerful. The decimals are so deep and rich. It vibrates the ground. And it has been said that the vibrations extend out up to five miles. Now we're talking a radius of five miles that you can hear one lion roaring to the ground. And the reason being is because the ground shakes. So if you're within that five mile radius, any deer or antelope or any other creature playing in the jungle feels the ground shake, they walk away out of that arena. And you can always find when there's been a lion in the, air, in, the, in, the, in the area, there's no one near him or his pride for up to five miles. That is how a lion establishes his domain, how he establishes his territory, how he establishes his reign. It is in that region that the female lion also has the, uh, the, the mandate of protecting that realm along with her husband who just roared to the ground and caused everything within the five mile radius to shake. Come on, somebody. So don't look at just the physical, not only just the physical, because if you look at that, you're not going to have a protector. You can have somebody who's all into themselves and not into you. So let's see this in action in scripture. Abigail and David. David asked, okay, let me just preface it real fast just to let you know. What happened was, let me just stop real fast. David, um, Nabal had asked David to protect and watch over the, the, his crops and fields and property. And so David did. So David goes, okay, I, you know, I did this for you. I, you did me a solid. I'm going to do you a solid. I, I did you a solid. You did me a solid. Hey, can we get some food when my troops come through? And then Nabal was all, I ain't giving you guys nothing. I don't even know who David is. Who is David? I don't know David. Ha, I hear Sal's after him anyway. I, you know, and so he's disrespecting the very king who did him a solid. So David was like, oh, no, you did not. So he sent 400 of his men to go kill Nabal because of the fact of the way that this guy disrespected him. Even though David did him a solid, uh, King David was ready to kill this man. So let's pick it up from um, uh, 
David asked a favor of Nabal, and Nabal refused and disrespect David. David gathered about 400 men ready to literally kill Nabal and all of his male descendants and relatives. Word got back to Nabal's wife, Abigail, and now Abigail is activated. 1 Samuel 25, 18. Abigail quickly got together 200 loaves of bread, two large clay, large clay jars of wine, the meat from five sheep, a large sack of roasted grain, a hundred handfuls of raisins, and 200 handfuls of dried figs. And she loaded up all the food on donkeys and told her servants, take this on ahead. I'll catch up with you. She didn't tell her husband, Nabal, what she was doing. She found out about disasters, about to destroy everything and everybody and everything she knew. Verse 7, 25, 35. Abigail quickly got off her donkey and bowed down in front of David. Then she said, sir, please let me explain. Don't pay any attention to that good for nothing of all. His name means fool, and it really fits him. I didn't see him or the men that you sent over. But please take this gift of food that I brought and share it with your followers. The Lord has kept you from taking revenge and from killing innocent people. But I hope your enemies and anyone who wants to harm you will end up like Nabal. I swear this by the living Lord and by, my, and by your life. Verse 28. Please forgive me if I if I can just say a little bit more. The Lord will always protect you and your family because you fight for him. I pray that you will never, ever do anything evil as long as you live. Come on, somebody. Men, you want a woman like Abigail in your circle. Someone who will intercede for you. Someone who will go to heaven and hell for you. Someone willing to take a bullet for you. Men, you want a woman like that because she protects your spirit realm. Even to the degree that Abigail tells her husband what she did, and he is so freaked out that he dies 10 days later. King David finds out about it, and then 1 uh, Samuel 25, 39, and when David heard that the ball was dead, he said, oh, blessed be the Lord. Come on, somebody. God is good. <laughs> that has pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of the ball and has kept his servant from evil. For the Lord has returned the wickedness upon the ball upon his own head. And David sit and commune with Abigail to take her to him, to wife. He recognized this woman. I need this woman in my circle. Because she. he saw the way she was willing to do whatever it takes to protect the family and the spirit realm. Let's talk about Jacob and Ra Rachel, Raquel. Genesis chapter 29, verse 5. He said to them, hey, do you know Laban of Nahor? And they said, yeah, we do. He continued, is he well? They answered, yeah, he is. And there is his daughter, Raquel, coming with the flock. He said, it is still broad daylight, too early to run up all the animals, water and flock, and take them to pasture. But they said, hey, we cannot until all the flocks are rounded up. And then he then the stole then the stone is rolled off the mouth of the well, and then we water the sheep. While he was still speaking with them, Rachel comes with her flock, father's flock. Get this, for she was a shepherd. She was a shepherd. Can women pastor a church? Yes, you know why? Because Rachel was the shepherd of her father's flock. Come on, somebody. Women can pastor, women can shepherd. Verse 10. And when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of his uncle Laban, and the flock of his uncle Laban, Jacob went up and rolled the stone off the mouth of the well and watered the flock of his uncle Laban. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and broke into tears. My God, this brother broke down and started crying. No, but see, you got to understand something. He first said, why are you guys coming up? It's too early. That's too early. And plus, that's still that you need to get a roll away the stone from the well. Those are men there. He didn't even touch, no one got up and touched that stone. But he sees Rachel coming and he's like, Oh, you need some water? I got it. And now the dude is volunteering to move a big old rock. What kind of power will possess this woman that this man won't even move a rock for his buddies? But he sees a hottie coming down the street, goes, Oh, you need, to, I got you. He was just talking a second ago. I you, you can't do nothing because the rock's right there. Oh, Rachel, you want, I got the rock. And he's like, da, 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 boom, moves the rock. And then the brother broke down and starts crying. You want a woman that can make you cry, that'll make you do stuff you don't want to do. That is a good woman to do stuff you don't even want to do. Come on, somebody. He told them, there's a big old rock right there. 
Oh, Rachel, you want some water? Hold on. Let, hold, wait, let me get this. The same guy, mind you, the same guy who wouldn't even go hunt with his brother Esau. This brother was inside cooking lentils, cooking soup. He was His hands were so soft. He was so delicate. But now this brother's up there moving rocks for... I digress. <laughs> he broke into tears. Genesis 31 verse 4. And Jacob sit and called Raquel and Leah to field to the field unto his flock, and said to them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not towards me as before, but the God of my father has been with me. And ye know that with all my power I have served your father, and your father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times, but God suffered him not to hurt me. Verse 14. And Rachel and Leah answered and said to him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not are we not counted of him as strangers? For he has sold us. He sold us and has quite, oh yes, quite devoured also our money. For all the riches which God has taken from our father that is ours and our children, now then, whatsoever God has said unto thee, do. Then Jacob rose up and set his sons and his wives upon camels. Men, a woman will follow you anywhere if you are following God. Laban denied both of his daughters the opportunity to get the bridal price. He lied to Jacob. This brother was so corrupt. In fact, even uh, I'm gonna again I'm gonna give you a preview about what we're gonna talk about Saturday. She stole the, the the idols from her dad. Now you might say that was out of anger because he 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 took from him. She took from him. But what happened was when he when when Jacob said, "Hey, I'm leaving." He Jacob Laban says, "Well, I, I well I learned through divination that is because of you. You made me rich, so I don't want you to go nowhere." He learned from divination from little idols and statues and things he had. So Rachel went in there and took the little statues that he was given divination from. Men, you want a woman like Rachel, who was watching out the old spirit. But the beautiful thing was, they said her, both her and Leah said, uh, "You know what, Dad." Didn't even give us our bridal wedding. We didn't even have a legit bridal package. We didn't get what everybody else got. So whatever God has told you to do, you go do. You want to go to someplace you've never been before? We got you. If you heard from God, I'm right behind you. Men, you want a woman that will follow you as you follow God. The husband protects the soul of his wife by meeting the needs of the household. And the wife protects the spirit of her husband by making sure there's no distractions from any Jezebels, any attacks. She watches after his spirit while he watches after her soul. Back to the lions. A male lion is extremely powerful. So he's too slow to catch his prey. His muscles are too big. He can't run that fast. A female lion is quick and faster. So the male lion protects the pride. And the female lion protects his strength. I'm going to read the part again. The male lion protects the pride, the household. The female lion protects his strength. So together they work in harmony. Fun fact. The reason why a lion has a huge mane. Is to hide the true location of his throat. If an enemy can get at the lion's throat. He can take away the voice and the roar of the lion. It's the mandate of the female to protect his voice from ever being silent. 
the woman's role is to protect the spirit and the voice of her man. This is not to say that the woman doesn't have her own voice. This is to say that where where he lacks, she makes up the difference. Oh, he may have the strength and power to protect the household, but he can't run and bring the food. So the wife says, I got you, babe. You sit on there, you make sure everything, make sure the book, the cups, everything good. I'll be right back. She goes and brings back the deer. He then takes the deer and divvies out the food and makes sure no other lions, any other pride, any other predators will come to take the food that she provided for him. Isn't it interesting that when we talked about uh, Abigail and um, David, that she had a thousand bunch, a whole bunch of corn, a whole bunch of wine, some sheep, some goats. Nabal provided that for her, yes. But she used that to give and bless the king to protect the family and the bloodline. I told you before, the Ezer Konegdo, it is the protector of the household, the protector of the realm. And in Hebrew, it's like Wonder Woman. Women, my sisters, you are like Wonder Woman. You are the Ezer Konegdo. You are the spiritual protector of the household that God has placed you in. Men, you're like Adam. The ability to call those things out over all dominion, over all the uh, fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over okay, everything creepy thing that protect the earth, protect the realm, protect the kingdom that God has placed you in while your wife makes sure that you don't lose strength and that you don't lose your voice. There's a tandem working together. And when both circles of both the spirit realm and the, the earthly realm, the soulless realm come together, it creates a union like no other. Because now you get heaven and that heaven and earth working together in tandem in conjunction and in, in, in tandem working together, fulfilling the role of the image of God as it is in heaven, so as it is on earth. Now, as you now have this, the framework, if you will, the the uh, uh, foundation of going out there to find somebody who could be the other half of your circle. They don't necessarily have to agree with you. I mean, they might. you might love to eat meat. They might be a vegan. That's not a deal breaker, okay? It's not a deal breaker. But if you say, I have a desire to go to Africa to plant churches, and, and the other person says, well, I got, a, I, I got a desire to go to China and start an orphanage. Well, you're never going to be able to see each other because you got two different things. And that's okay. I mean, there's somebody else. There's, there, there's somebody else's circle, okay? But even to the degree... I love what Marilyn Hickey said. She says, my husband hates to travel. But he says, babe, you go. I'll watch the house and pay the bills. Make sure you got, you know, you arrive safely and come back and the house is clean and everything. That's working together. Yeah, that's equally yoke. The equally yoke part is having one circle, another circle coming together to form that perfect union. You can't have a circle up here and a circle down there because they can't come together. <laughs> The yoke, being equally yoked part has nothing to do with likes and personalities or characteristics. It's all about the mission and mandate. If you have a desire to go all over the world to preach the gospel, but your spouse says, I don't want to do that. But as you go, I will make sure I have the funds and finances for you to go. Or when the time you come back, I'll have the food and provision and everything else ready for you to go and organize everything so you can go do what God has called you to do. And I got you on this end. That is equally yoked. So do not feel like someone needs to have your same, um, uh, you know, you know, goals, uh, uh, um, uh, mandates and missions. It may not be, but you've got to be on at least the same page for your destiny. Same page of your destiny. Some of the best relationships are those or two people who are Worlds apart, as far as you know, likes and and characteristics, worlds apart. But like I told you, when I my that, that my uh, uh, manager, she said, or executive, she said, I go, why are you still with that guy who you say you can't, he gets on your nerve? And she said, because the rocks in his head fills the holes in mine, and it just works. I mean, I you can't ask for two completely separate people. But she says the rocks that he has in his head fills the holes in mine, and it just works. Sometimes that's all it takes. 
Yeah, yeah. When you ask people who have been long married longer than 20 years, yeah, they got some stories to tell you. But you, and you may find out, oh, she don't like fish. I can't stand fish. Uh, you know, uh, she likes the mountains. I hate the mountains. Uh, I like the beach. She hates the water. I mean, you're going to find that, but that's fine. That's okay. But if you're on the same page, the same destiny, you don't have to always go, but you don't mind supporting them when they go. You don't have to be the smartest, but doggone it, you know, you can bring home the, the check that'll be able to fill, fill, fill the refrigerator up. That's God, and that's good. So what I did was this. I'm going to tell you my little things. I went around because I want the pioneer uh, church in Detroit, Michigan. So I literally was looking at women at potentials. I go, how do you feel about planning a church in Detroit? No. Okay. Bye, Felicia. How about you? Uh, oh, no, bye, Felicia. So I wasn't looking at who's compatible with me. I wanted to find out who wants to do exactly what I want to do. I never found that girl. I never found her at all. But one day, one day, my little band, we went to a church in Sun Valley. And I saw this pretty green-eyed girl, and she looked at me, and she says, hey, uh, we're going to go outreach and win souls for Jesus. You want to come? Bruh. Bruh. My, my pastor told me, he said, I go, how do you know who's the one? And he says, you're going to know she's the one when you feel an uplift in your spirit, not your soul. Your spirit. So when Pamela said, I mean, all the girls I was, but the, the potentials who were before her um, were basically, I mean, it was just like, um, so you have no desire to go to Detroit Pioneer Church? Oh, no, no, I don't want to do that. Well, you want to serve God? Oh, I'll serve God. I'll go, I'll go to church on Sunday, but I'm, I don't want to do all that. No, no. I was... Um, discouraged, but I knew, uh, you know, she was out there. She being my, the one, my circle and, um, my soul was being lifted, not my spirit. And, um, okay. Full, full transparency. I know, I know this will be recorded. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Uh, there was a, uh, a, a, a woman, she, 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 um, she was she was in Hollywood. She late eighties, um, and she's a singer. And um, uh, early on uh, in her career, late eighties, mind you, um, there was an attraction. And I told her, "How do you feel about Pioneer?" She wasn't even saved. I don't think. I said, "How do you how do you feel about going to Detroit and Pioneer Church?" And she was actually at the gym. Um, and she goes, <laughs> no, no. And that, that hurt me. That really did. Cause I really wanted this one to be the one I wanted this one. And cause my pastor just told me, cause I was, I was talking about her in particular. And so my soul was, was, um, I'll, I'll tell you who she is on Saturday. Cause you're going to say her. Yeah. Her. Uh, my soul was was heightened, if you know what I mean, because I really wanted this one to be the one. But my spirit was crushed when she said that to us. So I got married five years later. I see her on TV. I, I you know, I see her. Her little music is taken off. I'm like, oh my god! And I, I run into her again at a different gym, but we were there both there. And I'm looking at her like. I remember you. And she goes, Andre? And she was, I'll never forget this. She was on a treadmill. And she, I mean, she would, I mean, she would just ride the treadmill and she's talking to me. And I'm sitting there going, like, oh my God, oh my God. Oh wow. I'm like, did you? And look at look look look, you know, look at your success. And I'm now I'm all like a little fanboy crushing on this girl who I had a crush on, who is now just sitting you know, right now in front of me, riding a treadmill. And then she's riding this bike and she goes, so what have you been up to? I said, oh, oh this and that, you know, everything. And I go, I, I, I go, I see, you know, your, your career is taking off. And she goes, yeah, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's getting there. And she goes, I remember when you asked me if I wanted to go to Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> and I was just like, that was it. That was it. She actually remembered that. 
she remembers something I told her five years ago prior to that point. And she says, I'll never forget that when you told me that. Ha, 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 ha. And like basically laughed my face. And that was God bringing me closure. That's probably what I can, all I can say. So all that to say, when I made the decision, I'm going, I want to ask this woman to marry me. I want to ask her to marry me. And so I went to town, downtown LA. And I, I, you know, I'm, I'm still a young guy. So I was taking the bus. I took the bus to, to the jeweler in downtown Los Angeles. And I'm, I'm buying the ring and I'm picking on the ring. And I got so excited. And I'm hearing my pastor in the back of my mind saying, she uplifts your spirit, not your soul. And I'm sitting there going like, wow, this woman's going to be, the, you know, I'm going to marry this woman. I'm going to marry this woman. I'm going to ask this woman to marry me. And I walk outside and I'm waiting for my bus. Again, I, I'm, I'm a young guy in downtown Los Angeles waiting for a bus. And the Lord tells me, he goes, what do you see? And I said, I say lots and lots of people. And he says, and they're all going to hell unless someone preaches to them. And so I looked at my little transfer. I had a transfer because I spent all my money in the gym. And I go, I go, I got about two hours of my transfer. And so what I did was I just started to witness and street preach in downtown Los Angeles around two o'clock in the afternoon. And I was just, I just wanted preaching. I wanted preaching. And like I said, I spent all my money uh, putting in a down payment for Pamela's engagement ring. And I looked at my transfer, my transfer expired. I go, oh my God, how am I going to get home? How am I going to get home? Okay, so when I began my preaching, there was this old guy, oh, bless his heart. He was old Hispanic guy. He was just sitting there with his little cane, just kind of, just kind of he had sunglasses on, just looking at me, nodding his head like, okay. And he didn't say a word. He was just there nodding his head, listening to me. But I was out there for about a good two hours just preaching, 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 preaching. And when I realized my transfer expired, I go, oh, my God, how am I going to get home? A Mexican man walked up to me and he said, good word, mijo. And he has me money. You want to talk about my spirit man coming alive. God showed me that day. He's alive. And God blessed me. I was preaching till my transfer expired and God still made a way for me to take the last bus to go home with, with the ring in my, in my pocket. And I got to tell you, uh, that completes your circle. <laughs> it makes your circle. So if you're looking for somebody, first of all, my sister, be in that place to begin to start praying now. You know the dude's alive. You know he's rolling around. You know he's he's up to something. Um, you know he might not even be saved. He he probably is with somebody else. He's probably on some bad mission field somewhere. Uh, who you know, somebody you might even know, your next door neighbor or somebody in your church. Begin to start praying for him. Ask the Lord to give you a burden for him now. This is part of your DNA. And as you begin to pray for him, no, like something to the degree like, Father, I just pray this man that you have for me, God, that you protect him, God. Father, whatever he's going through, God, meet the need, God. Father, whatever has happened in his life, oh God, I ask and pray, Lord, would you send angels, Father, before him, behind him, above him, you know, to keep him safe, to keep him. Begin to start to pray for this individual because as you begin to pray for him, there will be a relationship started to, 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 to the degree that when you see this brother, you're going to say, I have been praying for you because there's always a connection in the spirit realm from what you do when you begin to pray. When you meet that individual, when you see that individual, you're going to say, wow, you're the one I've been praying for. Isn't that powerful? Men, my brothers, if you're looking for somebody, begin to pray for her. Something to this degree. Father, I pray you bless her, God. Father, whatever she's going through, God, give her strength today, God. Father, I pray that you favor her, Father, like Ruth and and, and um, Naomi, God. Father, that you help her, God, and that, Father, handfuls of purpose will be put, up, put, to, put to her, God. Father, I pray that you give her the strength of Abigail. Father, I pray that you give her the strength of Raquel, Lord God, as a shepherdess, Lord God. Whatever is going on in her life, Father, meet the need and help her, Lord, and begin to pray for this woman. Pray for her, my brothers. Pray for her, because you are the protector of her realm, and she is a protector of your spirit, and they are alive. And when you begin to see them, you're going to know, ah, you're the one. There'll be an uplift of your spirit and not just your soul. Not just your soul. It'll be an uplift in your spirit. And then you know, when both circles come together, you're going to look like God. 
and God will be with you. And the lion will roar. And the sound that comes out of your voice will be one that has been met with the strength of the woman that has been there protecting your spirit. And ladies, my sister, your husband, as you have been protecting your spirit, it has given him the strength to get out there and to work to provide food and shelter and warmth and security for the household. They work together. God told Adam, the male and female, subdue the earth, take the mean in it. It wasn't, oh, you do this and then you do that. Both of them together, combination together. Co-pastoring, co-ministry, co-kingdom ministry. Pray for your king. Pray for your queen because your kingdom is at hand. It is the role of a man to protect, provide, and be the voice of the family. It is now time to take responsibility for the circle you have authority over. Every day um, isn't always a picnic. I mean, we live on planet Earth. We're going to have problems. You're going to have issues. But if they're in your circle, if they're in your circle, it becomes a whole lot easier. That I can promise you. That I can promise you. Any questions or comments? Wow, that was powerful. My God. <laughs> wow. Oh. oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. So, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I don't know, you know, as far as, who you're going to marry or when you're going to get married. Uh, that's not the responsibility or the mandate, but the, the issue of it is, is that when this person comes in your life, the, the, the ground should already be fertile. The ground should already be fertile. And I love it. The Bible says when Jacob saw Rachel, the boy broke down and started crying. He cried, y'all. He cried. That's when you know it's God. Because the kingdom has come. We're going to continue this, guys. I probably kept you here too late. So we're going to continue this. So um, I just want you to be encouraged. And I want you to know that, um, my sisters, you've got such a powerful and amazing and awesome um, mandate upon you. The mandate upon your life is one that has a spiritual dynamic a male can't even come close to. And let me just say this. You know how powerful the, the female genome code, genome, genome code is? That every person born, every time there's a, 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 an infant in the womb of a, of a woman, um, it's always female. That is a dominating trait. Every child that has sparked life Inside the womb, it is always female. Later on, the X chromosome is an added, which then changes it to a male. But every child from, from the get-go inside of a womb is a female. And just so we're clear, that's why men have nipples. I love you guys. <laughs> we will continue this. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. And the beautiful, beautiful thing is this: if a woman is carrying a female in her womb, even as an infant, 
even, uh, not even an infant, even as a an embryo, a female, an embryo now, in the womb of her mother, that embryo has within her. Now I'm talking within the first trimester, the embryo, the female embryo growing inside the woman, has already formed all the eggs she's ever going to have, or, or are already formed within the female before the female is even being born out into the world. So when a mother begins to speak over a child, she is also speaking over the generations and the grandchildren, even before her daughter comes out of the womb. That is power. I love you guys. Quick question. Out of all the circles, how many millionaires are going to have? Me. Um, me. <laughs> me. Me. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Me. So we're going to continue this um, on Saturday and um, some more fun facts about animals and the kingdom and whatnot. Um, and if you, and interesting enough, if you notice that, uh, why is it that there's always a queen bee and a queen wasp? Something about that. We'll talk more. Okay, it is written. Come on. So we love you guys. Um, my husbands, my, my brother, my husbands, my brothers, pray for your wives, man. My sisters, pray for your husbands. My single sisters, pray for this brother to rise up, to have a voice, to speak up, and to play, that he has enough finances and the strength to take care of you. My single brothers, pray for my sisters. Pray for them that they have the discipline and the discernment to protect you and to protect the spirit realm when we don't even have a clue. That is our mandate, y'all. So I love you guys, and uh, we will see you on Saturday to continue the series. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye, right, everyone. Have a blessed evening. And Jay, that was amazing again as usual. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye, Hello, everybody. Man. Shalom, everybody. Hello. Hi, everybody.